Texas, Tim Miller. Weather coverage you can count on. Easter weekend, and we've got some excellent weather on tap. I'll have details straight ahead in your five for six forecast. Miller, Miller, Miller. Excellent. <laughs> Love it. Right now on News Channel 6 at 4, the future of Dogwood Terrace. Yeah, the city's getting people who live there ready for what's next. Plus, Project Sunshine, a processing plant that could be headed to Aiken, but not everyone is for it. And unemployment is a big issue for military spouses. We're going to let you know what Fort Eisenhower is doing to help as News Channel 6 at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brad Mee. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with an update on Dogwood Terrace Apartments. It's been two years since the Augusta Housing Authority submitted a demolition application for the apartment complex. And today they had a meeting with residents to talk about what happens from here. Our Bria Smith was there, and she's live at the Augusta Housing Authority with the story. Bria? That's right, Brad. Well, that application was approved March 1st of this year, and residents that I spoke with say they're satisfied with their options for relocation. While the application is approved and the process can now begin, Housing Authority staff say residents have up to 90 days to speak to speak with resident services and decide their option of another public housing or Section 8. The goal is to completely tear down the Dogwood Terrace complex and redevelop it into a more livable and safe environment. This project could take between four and six years, but Housing Authority staff have plans for tenants now. The biggest thing is not to move before they meet with resident services. Uh, the relocation package that we have set up for them requires them to meet with us to sign certain documents so that we can make the payments either on their behalf or to them for the relocation. The Housing Authority does ask that you do remain compliant and in good standing for qualification for relocation. Live in Augusta, Bria Smith, WJBF, News Channel 6. People in one Augusta neighborhood say they want to know why there are three portable buildings just sitting on their street. Take a look at what it looks like on Morning Drive off Peach Orchard Road. Three used trailers sitting on an empty lot. Neighbors say it's been this way for months. Does this actually meet up to the city code of ordinances for this neighborhood? Because generally they have, you know, you can't just move in certain types of structures into residential zoned areas like this. How do they look? Not too good. So we'd like to find out what the issue is with those uh, structures there. We will keep you posted on what comes from the city of Augusta, Richmond County, when it comes to what's going to happen to those buildings just sitting there, as we said. It is time now for our first check of the forecast. And we want to check in with meteorologist Miller Hyatt. Brad and Jenny. In your Viper 6 forecast, Brad and Jenny. We appreciate it, Miller. Thank you. Reaction tonight to news that a poultry processing plant could be coming to Aiken County. Aiken Bureau Chief Sean Cabbage-Dog talked to people who live nearby. It's called Project Sunny, and a house of Rayford plant could be built along Frontage Road here in Aiken County. Many of the folks I spoke with say they have concerns about what could be on the way. The North Carolina Poultry Processing Company intends to invest $185 million in constructing a plant north of Aiken. The city is currently in discussions about potentially providing the company with a significant discount on its water usage. Some are worried about the long-term environmental and social impacts of the facility. But in order to support this plant and their on-the-ground inventory to feed into that plant, the first year we need 20 to 21 million more chickens. Where are they going to be raised at? And what happens with those operations, there are many studies that show that there are environmental impacts with these operations that are also long-lasting, health aspects, uh, introduction of ammonia to the soil that can ruin the future use of that farmland. Meanwhile, Aiken County Council will continue their discussions on April 16th. A public hearing is scheduled for May 7th. In Aiken County, I'm Aiken Bureau Chief Sean Cabbage Stock, WJBF News Channel 6.
Big news for Bamberg, nearly three months after the city was hit by an EF2 tornado. The city council approved a state of emergency in late January, requesting help at the state level. Governor Henry McMaster asked for assistance from the Small Business Administration last week, and his request has been approved. City leaders say this assistance will help them and several other counties in the area. Well, we're grateful. We're grateful. And I'm, I'm definitely asking speak for my constituents and those uh, who uh, reside in the city and even in the county and surrounding counties because this effort will not only help Bamberg County but help our surrounding counties. I believe it's Allendale, um, Hampton, and other surrounding areas as well. And so I believe that everyone is excited about what, what will happen as it relates to the SBA loans. SBA has also opened a disaster loan outreach center at Bamberg County Courthouse, which will stay open until April 10th. We'll have more about the center on News Channel 6 at 7. Well, Ford Eisenhower helping military spouses find jobs today. Hannah Latier shows us how. I've been a military spouse for about 15 years. As you know, there's a lot of relocation, a lot of instability, uh, and things that are unpredictable. One of the things I think that's so great about having an event like this is that there's an opportunity to not just find out about positions, but also to network. Hiring Our Heroes is a U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation program that connects the military community with American businesses. Program leaders and Fort Eisenhower staff holding a hiring event at the installation Thursday for military spouse and anyone else who was looking to find a job. We had 30 employers and we had 100, well over 100 uh, registered job seekers here today. That's fantastic. We exceeded what we did last year by over 25. There were national and local employers there, like the Columbia County School System, Wells Fargo, Boeing, Penske, Goodwill, and more. Military spouses are an important workforce they're hoping to tap into. Come on! The HOH says more than half a million veterans and military spouses have found careers through its programs. Military spouses are some of the most talented candidates that we've seen. Not only that, but they are so resilient. It's hard for military spouses to plant roots in their careers. Those at the hiring event say this makes it easier. It's the military's way of acknowledging the hard work of military spouses how they are valued and cherished and loved and legitimately part of their soldier's success story. In Augusta, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. Richmond County Schools getting students ready for life after high school. Hatsabai High holding its career fair today for juniors and seniors where organizers were trying to introduce them to the options that are out there for their careers. Local businesses and colleges also on hand as well as a chance to sign up to vote. I think it was an opportunity for uh, young students to actually explore careers at different colleges. Um, and you know, have a direction of where they want to go. Um, and I think it's an opportunity to actually just to get a chance to ask questions and just tap into um, the career force or the, um, the college or information. This Channel 6, pleased to be one of the businesses represented there at Hapsaba High School. This career fair is a really, really well done annual event. Augusta's Housing and Community Development was recently approved for some important funding. Tenured Educators Affordable Community Housing, or TEACH, gives local educators the opportunity to buy affordable homes. Four new three-bedroom, two-bath, single-family homes can be built on Lyman Street in South Augusta. Each one is between 1,600 and 1,800 square feet, and they cost just under $170,000. Housing and Development pays for half. The buyer pays the rest. Oh, so I think one thing when we start talking about affordable housing, one thing that we cannot we cannot control pretty much the pay scale. We use HUD income guidelines, which are sort of based on total household income. What, what I would probably say is don't try to qualify yourself. If home ownership is of interest to you, give us a call. The TEACH initiative is also part of a plan to revitalize South Augusta. To find out if you qualify, click on the story on WJBF.com.
Coming up, lighting the way for nighttime golf carts. The bill making its way through the South Carolina legislative session next. Good Friday starts off cold with temperatures in the 30s, but the 70s return by the afternoon. Details in your 5 for 6 forecast coming up. Over the years, thousands of people have gotten their hands on one. And who knows, you could be next. Win your very own Good Morning Augusta coffee mug at wjbf.com slash coffee club. Sponsored by Honda Cars of Aiken. Soon it may be legal to drive golf carts at night in the Palmetto State. Right now, state law prevents drivers from operating them after dark on public roads. But a new bill that passed in the state house today would let local governments decide if that's a good idea. Mike Owen has more. Bill H-4906 would allow counties in the Palmetto State to decide if they want to allow golf carts with headlights and taillights to operate at night in designated areas. I spoke with one of the bill's sponsors, Representative David O'Neill of York County. They want to enjoy their golf carts. They use it as a second car. Um, it's just a fun way to get around town. Um, and if that's what they want, I'm all for it. But the bill has Surfside Beach's police chief worried. There's intoxicated people um, more commonly driving at night that may not see a golf cart. Um, the golf cart operators uh, may not be able to see as well because it's at night and golf carts generally don't have uh, headlights as bright as motor vehicles. Chief Hoffman says he prefers low-speed vehicles as a safer alternative to golf carts because they're equipped with safety features like seatbelts, taillights, rearview mirrors, and windshields. The owner of S2 Golf Cart sells both golf carts and low-speed vehicles. He says that most golf carts were never designed to be road vehicles, and many of the rentals along the Grand Strand only go 15 miles per hour, and that slower speed at night could lead to more accidents. If I was coming up on a vehicle that was going 14 miles an hour, I saw lights in front of me, and it's only going 14 miles an hour, that could create an issue. You come up on it too fast, not realizing that that car's going that slow, and then you're hitting the brakes, person behind you's hitting the brakes. If you're wondering about the price difference between golf carts and low-speed vehicles, a brand-new souped-up golf cart could cost you about $13,000. Yeah, at least. A fully loaded low-speed vehicle is about $15,000. A standard golf cart runs around $4,500. The bill did pass the House on Wednesday, so now it goes to the Senate. The madness resumes tonight with Clemson, Alabama, Arizona, and North Carolina in the Sweet 16. It's going to be a big night out west, and Anthony Vasquez is getting us all ready for for it, covering Clemson next. I'm attorney for you. Then Thursday, all the way through next weekend, is going to be fantastic with plenty of sunshine and high temperatures in the 70s. Brad and Jenny. March Madness is getting heated as teams are dwindling out of the tournament with only 16 teams left. Two from the Palmetto State, as we know, are still dancing. The Clemson Tigers on the men's side and the South Carolina Gamecocks on the women's. And tonight, Clemson will have the chance to reach the Elite Eight for just the second time in program history when they take on Arizona in the Sweet 16. Anthony Vasquez is live in Los Angeles with the Clemson basketball team. Hi, Anthony. Hello and welcome to the Sweet 16 here in Los Angeles. In just three hours, Clemson and Arizona tip off with a winner punching its ticket to the Elite Eight. Let's talk Tigers now and the roller coaster ride to the Sweet 16. It was a perfect start in the non-conference slate. 9-0, and Clemson was actually ranked number 24 in the country. Clemson also beat Alabama, another team playing in Los Angeles for the Sweet 16. But then the tides turned once ACC play started. The Tigers started 4-6. and six. Coach Brunel got a lot of heat, but his players stood by him throughout that roller coaster run, and now here they are in the Sweet 16. Yeah, uh, a lot of the same. It's the second Sweet 16 in seven years, and, um, and it's, it, over the past six or seven years, it's also one of the one of your, one of your coaches in the ACC. Is, I think it's like top six, one coach in the league. So, I mean... There's a lot of credit that he is due and doesn't get. And so, uh, you know, playing for him for four years and being a South Carolina kid, it, it, uh, whenever someone goes after somebody who you've been playing for, you know, it's not, it's not fun or easy. And so, uh, you know, being able to win for him and continue on this run is uh, special.
Well, let's see how Clemson plays today as the underdog against Arizona. Clemson already beat New Mexico, a popular upset pick in many people's brackets. They also took care of Baylor as the underdog. And if the Tigers win today, they'll make their first Elite Eight in over four decades. That's it for now from Los Angeles. Back to you in the studio. Anthony Vasquez, thanks. Still ahead. One man trying to catch a few boxes. Who's throwing them and why after the break? Hey there, I'm Ana Christina. Coming up this week, Chef Nakia Darch joins me to prepare a duck. You heard me right. Plus a special pairing treat with Kate Wine Room. And after, Kayla Bacon joins us to chat music and perform. Happening this Friday at 12.30. One couple's comical experience while doing some spring cleaning was caught on camera. Yeah, this is how things went when they tried to clean out the attic. Hey, you're you're <laughs> start higher up. Well, that Lean down a little bit. This one's a little heavier. Well, it's already opening. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Right? I have no idea. My goodness, the mark that man there said he caught most of the boxes his wife was throwing down. He said a few things broke, and so did his pride after missing a couple of those boxes. Yeah, I don't think that's the way it works. It's, yeah, taking a risk there. Taking not a knowing risk. what's in those boxes, maybe. Mm -hmm. There is more coverage of details on coming up at 4.30. Including the final push by Georgia lawmakers to pass bills. We'll take a look at what's on their agenda under the Gold Dome next.